Hi, my name is Devin. I'm a thermographer here at T-Equipment and today we're going to talk about how to compare thermal cameras and what specifications matter for your application. Hopefully after this short talk you're going to understand a little bit more about how thermal cameras are spec'd out and which thermal cameras work best in different circumstances. So, first thing to consider here is what kind of form factor camera is best for you. We have thermal cameras that plug into your phone, which are excellent for hobbyists, homeowners, anyone who's gonna just use a thermal camera for a few limited cases. We have small handheld units, which are good for technicians, anyone who is going to be working in more of an industrial environment or anyone who needs to use the camera on a more regular basis, save images, and perhaps generate reports. There are also pistol style cameras and more ergonomic rotating optical block style cameras, which are a little bit beyond the scope of this discussion, but are excellent options for the professional user of thermal imaging. When it comes to specifications, the most important thing is resolution. That can be called thermal resolution. It can be called focal plane array or FPA resolution, or just pixel size, pixel count. A base number for that is 80 by 60. 80 by 60 for an uncooled focal plane array, thermal resolution is really the bare minimum for any thermal application in today's uses. 80 by 60 literally means 80 pixels wide by 60 pixels high. And that's it. It's like your television. And the pixel count is directly correlated to image quality. You want more of them. Anything under 80 by 60 is going to be pretty unreadable. A better number and a more acceptable resolution for most applications is 160 by 120. That's four times as many pixels as an 80 by 60 and is generally considered a standard good sensor. 320 by 240 is another four times resolution and is generally considered to be a expert level, high resolution thermal camera sensor. The next most important thing to consider when selecting a thermal camera is sensitivity. Now, sensitivity can be a little counterintuitive because it doesn't use any units that people use in the United States or really most fields. They use a number called MK or millikelvins. So Kelvins, which you might remember from your high school science class, is a scale of measurement which starts at absolute zero and zero on the Celsius on the Celsius scale, excuse me, is negative 273 degrees. So when you have Celsius and you want to go to Kelvin, you add 273 degrees to go one way or the other. So we don't really need to know about that starting point when we talk about sensitivity because it's a relative indication. When a thermal camera says it has a 100 millikelvin sensitivity, that really means that the smallest temperature difference it can see is 1,000th times 100 of one Kelvin, which is the same as 0.1 degrees Celsius. Whew, that was wordsy. So 150 millikelvins is 0.15 degrees Celsius. 25 millikelvins is 0.025 degrees Celsius. So when you look at sensitivity, the smaller the number, the better. 25 is extremely sensitive for most of the industrial cameras uh, that we have. 
and 150 is really going to be the top of what any professionally made camera sensitivity will be. Remember, a lower number is better. Don't worry about the units. Another factor to consider is temperature range. Temperature range is mostly going to matter depending on what you use your thermal camera for. If you're going to be using it for home envelope inspections, uh, looking at breaker boxes in your house, looking at plumbing, looking at radiant floor heating, almost any thermal camera will have the necessary range for that application because the starting upper limit is around 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Anything over 300 degrees Fahrenheit, if you're looking at those kinds of targets, means your house could be in trouble of burning down. Maybe some exceptions in the breaker box. But if you're doing heavier duty mechanical or electrical work, you need to make sure that you have a thermal camera that has a higher temperature limit to meet your needs. Some professional cameras uh, go up to 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's a good level. Uh, there are also specialty cameras that go up to 2400 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you need more help selecting a camera based on the temperature range, please give us a call and we'll be happy to assist you. Another point of comparison for thermal cameras is field of view. Now field of view is just what it sounds like. It's generally measured in degrees horizontal. A standard field of view can range anywhere from 20 to 35 degrees. And that's literally the, the angle of the camera aperture. For most applications, that standard field of view is going to be a good choice. Whether you're doing electrical inspections, or looking at home envelopes, or looking for any other of standard thermal application. If you need to do any law enforcement or search and rescue applications, you're going to want a tighter field of view that corresponds to a telephoto lens. And a number for that could be between 10 and 15 degrees, sometimes, even, sometimes as low as 8. And that's going to be good for law enforcement or anything outside. And it's also going to be good for doing industrial inspections where you can't get as close to your target as you might like. Refresh rate is very important for thermal cameras. You may notice that a lot of thermal cameras state that their refresh rate is 9 hertz. Now 9 hertz is quite a deal slower than the human eye. If you take a 9 hertz camera and wave it around, you'll get some artifacts, uh, some clipping and tearing. If you've ever played a video game on two high settings for your computer, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, if you are looking at anything that's moving, say in a law enforcement or hunting capacity, 9 hertz is going to be too slow. You will want a camera that's either rated 15, 30, or 60 hertz for anything that's moving or if you're doing any kind of scanning, particularly at a distance. A higher refresh rate is better, and you tend to pay more for higher refresh rate cameras. Now, the reason 9 hertz is where a lot of the cameras stop is because any camera over 9 hertz is considered export controlled by the Commerce Department. So to take it out of the country, you would need a license. Well, this can be difficult to come by. So export compliant models of most thermal cameras are available in 9 hertz variants. And if you have any other questions regarding refresh rate, please give us a call and we'd be happy to get you the best camera for your application. Now, a couple of things to take into consideration when picking out a form factor are that if, if you're using a camera a lot, you're going to want a, a dedicated thermal imager. You don't want a phone plug-in because that kind of thermal imager 
is really more geared towards the, the hobbyist or the homeowner. Something that's ruggedized, has a good hand feel, you don't need to use your own device, a standalone model is going to be a better choice for you. Your phone models are very nice these days. In fact, a lot of them have better sensors than their standalone variants at similar price points. So if the only thing that matters to you is image quality and you're just going to be using it a few times, I would definitely get one of the newer phone plugins. And that's really what it, what it means to compare cameras for, for these handhelds and a, a little brief introduction to the differences of the brands. Thank you so much for coming by. My name is Devin, a certified thermographer with the equipment. And if you have any other questions, please give us a call. We'll be happy to talk to you about any of your application needs.